the use of other elements besides palladium is, is an exciting extension of the field. And it's made it obvious that there is a wide spectrum of environments, chemical environments, in which these nuclear reactions can occur. And some of these environments are much easier to produce uh, than others. And in particular, it's easier to produce them in the nickel system than it is in the palladium system. But it depends on how you go about doing it, too. I mean, there's a, the electrolytic technique is very difficult, whereas the ultrasonic loading technique is much easier. So it depends upon how you put the hydrogen or the deuterium into the metal, and it depends upon what the metal is. Another entrepreneur and scientist who is not waiting for the debate to be decided is Randall Mills of Blacklight Power in New Jersey. His hydrocatalysis process is based on his attempts to resolve problems that remain in quantum mechanics, which had concerned even Albert Einstein. In early 1999, Blacklight announced the discovery of an entirely new class of remarkable hydrogen compound called hydrinohydrides which, if proved real, would support Dr. Mills' theory. While avoiding the label of cold fusion, Mills has attracted large-scale funding and created a company that is positioning itself to be a leading manufacturer in the new energy age. Some of our better experiments with the electrolytic cell have generated as much as 1,000% excess heat. For example, if we put one watt into the cell, we will get 10 watts out. And that, with that kind of heat, we know that there is something going on, and it's not simply an experimental error. There was no other source for this heat other than some unknown process. People are stunned by, by Mills's work, even though he insisted that it was not cold fusion. Uh, I was one of the people who tended to believe there might be something there. I was impressed from the beginning by Mills's credentials, the fact that he was a Harvard graduate and had taken courses at MIT, so I thought it was worth investigating. And um, I believe fairly early on that uh, Mills was indeed uh, doing cold fusion, just as other people were, so that the Mills effect, if you will, the light water effect, was really just the other side of the coin from the... Uh, palladium uh, heavy water effect that Pons and Fleischmann are getting. Every now and then, a freelance cold fusion scientist shows up on the scene with a device that offers great promise, only to be found lacking when put to the test by other scientists. But what if a breakthrough device does, in fact, exactly what its maker says it should do, repeatedly before trained independent eyes? This vessel is sitting here making as we watch, helium-4 and the temperature is 215 degrees centigrade. Now this is a very novel concept that you can have a nuclear fusion occur at 215 centigrade and one atmosphere pressure. Those are very, very mild conditions compared to what they're doing in the plasma fusion and in the H-bomb and so forth. I discovered that using certain standard commercial catalysts, one could get this fusion to occur under reproducible mild conditions. And as I say, this is the key. You change this just a little bit, and it doesn't work. So inside this vessel now for six, seven weeks, we have had deuterium fusing to helium-4 and given this excess temperature of about 35 degrees centigrade, which is big, a really big effect. Now in the bottom of this vessel, which is heated in this jacket, there's about 40 or 50 grams of palladium on activated carbon catalyst. And this run is now continuing and, and maybe will continue for some weeks or months still. The idea is to test the reliability of the catalyst. The catalyst must work for some months or it's not a viable commercial process. This experiment very much follows along the thought process of uh, Les uh, Case. And uh, behind me you see uh, five different uh, sets of apparatus. Uh, the big vessel here is one of Les Case's, uh, he calls them uh, footballs. It's a stainless steel uh, vessel on a heating mantle uh, set up in exactly the arrangement that Les Case 
himself is doing in New Hampshire. On the uh, monitor, you see displayed, in fact, the mass spectrum from one of these uh, samples. This is uh, a relatively high level of, uh, of helium-4. Uh, we compare the samples each day that we perform the analysis. We compare the sample of gas from the various uh, active cells and blanks with uh, a sample uh, of room air, uh, which we have measured uh, many, many times and know to be uh, 5.22 parts per million. If the helium is produced by a nuclear process, then necessarily there will be uh, an associated release of uh, heat. It appears that, uh, yes indeed, uh, in the vessel that was producing uh, helium, there was some evidence of excess uh, heat and that the amount of heat produced was approximately uh, quantitatively correlated, that is the right amount of heat was produced uh, compared to that of a nuclear process involving uh, deuteron plus uh, deuteron producing uh, one helium for a nucleus, which releases 23.8 uh, million electron volts. My objective always has been not to play around scientifically because I'm not really a physicist, but to head towards commercialization. And I really want to go to 100 megawatt reactors, uh, maybe in two or three years, which is really compressing the time scale, but it's maybe possible. So the idea is to scale it up. The technology of catalytic fusion developed by Dr. Les Case is one of the most extraordinary developments we have in the coal fusion field. He has excess heat, massive excess heat, repeatable excess heat, clear null results, and also helium-4 production. Production of the very nuclear ash that the opponents of coal fusion uh, demanded in the early days. Now we have it in spades. It appears as though he is very close to having a self-sustaining device that will keep hot by itself, generate steam, hot water, perhaps electricity, before much longer. An experimentalist who has pioneered another promising cold fusion method, sonocavitation, is Dr. Roger Stringham of First Gate Energy. Using ultrasound frequency, Stringham has observed extraordinarily high temperatures caused by the process of cavitation, where microscopic bubbles in water tunnel their way into target metals, metals like silver, titanium, palladium, and platinum are melted by intense heat created during the brief moment it takes for a bubble to collapse. Well, this is a cavitation process going on in the bubble, and the acoustic energy is absorbed uh, by the liquid, and there is a certain point in which it creates small voids which actually grow and then collapse very rapidly, and that is the cavitation idea. The temperatures that are required to create these ejecta sites are at least the melting point of the metal, and it looks like uh, we are actually in the vapor phase, which is gaseous metal, and uh, this amounts to, for the liquid metal, 1600 degrees Kelvin, and, and for titanium, higher. For the vaporous state, is several thousand degrees higher than that. Stringham is seeking to commercialize his device for use as a home power multiplier that can supplement conventional electric power usage. Transmuting base metals into new, more refined elements was once the long sought after effect of the medieval alchemists.